Good morning. My name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Devotional 2024, Series 9, Lesson 1. The Bible passage is taken from 2 Kings, chapter 22, verse 11, 13, 16 to 17, 18b to 20a, and the title is The Book and Our Response. My sister, Dr. Deborah D.L. Chung, is a scientist professor based at the State University of New York at Buffalo, USA. She recently posted two videos on YouTube titled, How Do Scientists View God? and My Life in Science. I highly recommend them to those who doubt if science contradicts the Bible. If we believe the Bible being the inspired Word of God, what it teaches about God's creation and life in this world and beyond must be true. The Holy God cannot be untruthful and still be God. On the contrary, Satan the devil is a liar and the father of lies. My premise is that the Bible as the Word of God can powerfully affect human lives towards good and away from evil. The book demands a response. King Josiah of Judah, who reigned from 640 to 609 BC, was the great grandson of King Hezekiah, who reigned from 715 to 686 BC. Both Hezekiah and Josiah were commanded by God for doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord, like their ancestor David did. In about 622 BC, Josiah ordered the temple to be repaired. In the process, Hilkiah the high priest found the book of the law, perhaps referring to the five books of Moses, known as the Pentateuch. When Shephan, the secretary, brought it to King Josiah and read it to him, the king was greatly disturbed and grieved over its message. He realized how far they had fallen in their rebellion against God. The warnings from the book were hard to take. This led to the nation's spiritual awakening, repentance, and revival. Let's read the story from 2 Kings chapter 22. Now, verse 11. When the king heard the words of the book of the law, he tore his robes. Verse 13. Go and inquire of the Lord for me and for the people and for all Judah about what is written in this book that has been found. Great is the Lord's anger that burns against us because those who have gone before us have not obeyed the words of this book. They have not acted in accordance with all that is written there concerning us. Verse 16. This is what the Lord says. I am going to bring disaster on this place and its people. According to everything written in the book, the king of Judah has read. Because they have forsaken me and burned incense to other gods and aroused my anger by all the idols their hands have made, my anger will burn against this place and will not be quenched. Verse 18b. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel, says concerning the words you heard, because your heart was responsive and you humbled yourself before the Lord when you heard what I have spoken against this place and its people, that they would become a curse and be laid waste. And because you tore your robes and wept in my presence, I also have heard you, declares the Lord. Therefore, I will gather you to your ancestors, and you will be buried in peace. Your eyes will not see all the disaster I'm going to bring on this place. Now, what might be so disturbing about the words of the book? I remember the blessings and curses listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28. For the people who obey the Lord and follow his commands, here are some of the blessings. Healthy babies in the womb, good crops of the land, plentiful calves and lambs of the livestock, peaceful daily living, being God's holy people, being called by the name of the Lord and respected by the peoples on earth. 
reign in season, leadership among the nations, etc. For those who disobey the Lord and do not follow his commands, these are some of the curses. Difficult daily living, unhealthy babies in the womb, poor crops of the land, dwindling calves and lambs, destruction and ruin, diseases, heat and drought, dust storms, instead of rain, defeat before their enemies, madness and confusion of mind, wasted efforts, broken dreams, etc. Moses laid it out for the Israelites. This day I call the heavens and the earth as witnesses against you that I have set before you, you life and death, blessings and curses. Now choose life so that you and your children may live and that you may love the Lord your God, listen to his voice and hold fast to him. For the Lord is your life and he will give you many years in the land he swore to give to your fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Deuteronomy chapter 30. As Josiah reviewed the condition of the now defunct northern kingdom Israel and the looming threat of the rising empire Babylon, he realized that he must choose life and blessings rather than death and curses. He must listen to God and worship him alone. We might caution ourselves with what is laid out in Psalm 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water which yields its fruit in season and whose leaf does not wither whatever they do prospers. Not so the wicked, they are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous but the way of the wicked leads to destruction. Psalm chapter 1. The blessed delight in the law of the Lord, on which he meditates day and night. He prospers, but the wicked will not stand in judgment, but will perish. We too are given the choice between life and death, blessings and curses. We read the same book which demands our response. We must choose to worship God while we still can. God saw the humble heart of Josiah who wept for the future of his nation Judah. God promised to delay his judgment until after Josiah's death. The humble response of the leader brought relief for the nation for a time. God is merciful. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, God said to Solomon after the dedication of the temple, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin and will heal their land. God will not ignore the humble, penitent prayers of his people. God promises to forgive and restore. God's words demand our response. Let's pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, you have not been silent. You have given us the Bible, which is your word. The ball is now in our court. We can respond and obey and correct our ways, or we can ignore. But most of us trust in our own wisdom. We believe we can evaluate and analyze and come to the right conclusions. We are smart in our own eyes. Forgive us for our arrogance. We have excluded you in our thoughts and understanding. Please let us trust in your way, your truth, and your life. 
call us to repentance once more and restore us to a loving relationship with you. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My friends, love the Bible, enjoy the Bible, read the Bible, and practice what it teaches. God loves you all. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.